So bye everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys the things that I liked about the Pixel and the Pixel XL and the things that I didn't like about these guys after using them for about a month. This is TK. Let's go ahead and check it out. Here we have the Pixel XL and the Pixel uh, device by Google. These are the two implementations or the new iteration of Pixel devices that was provided to us from uh, Google. Now, this unfortunately puts an end to this device, which essentially is the last device of the lineup of the Nexus devices. This is the Nexus 6P, last year's model. Now, this is running the Snapdragon 810 processor, where we have the Snapdragon 821. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about the specs. The main reason why I'm mentioning this is because for me, I felt like this was one of the best devices that I've had. I still have this device. I didn't want to get rid of it um, as this device really has some of the main benefits and features that I like. The, old, the other thing is the 1.55 micron sensor, 12 megapixel sensor is still present on these new devices with some optimizations, but overall pretty much the same sensor. We have the same uh, aesthetical design where we have the fingerprint sensor on the back. They decided to keep that in there. And then they kept it as far as the volume rocker and everything, the same setup, it's a Nexus style volume uh, power and volume rocker right beneath it. We have a headphone jack on the top and then a bottom we have USB type C and our firing speaker here on the Pixel XL. And here we have a dual front facing speakers. We are looking at almost identical specs from the sense of internal hardware. Uh, we have the same camera sensors, both 8 megapixel sensors in the front, 12, point, uh, 12 megapixel 1.55 micron sensors in the back with LED flash. And what we have here, of course, is the same fingerprint sensor, same lightning fast fingerprint sensor on the back with this nice little glass panel. And it's a seamless transition between the two and it's intended for better grip. So as you're holding the device and you put your finger here, you don't have that slippery material. And it really has a unique look. So if anybody ever sees this device, you have no question that this is a Pixel device. No other device has this on the market. Both these devices were made by HTC, as was the original or the first Nexus device that was made. So first Nexus was an HTC device, first Pixel devices are made by HTC. Although you wouldn't know it if you didn't know, if, you didn't, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know that this was an HTC device. Uh, getting into the specs, we have the Snapdragon 820 on both these devices. We have four gigabytes of RAM running on both of them as well. Uh, we have really nice fingerprint sensor. As you can see here, I can unlock both devices very, very fast. I'll go ahead and go here. Uh, we have gesture control on these devices. So now we are able to open the notification panel directly while using our fingerprint sensor. And that's very, very nice. The, 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 the application here is extremely well received. Now I'm used to seeing these on Honor devices or Huawei devices, so this is very nice. Um, again, the cameras on the back are pretty much the same. We're looking at, a, again, an HTC made device, but it's really flavored and customized to Google's experience. Uh, we have Android 7.1.1. Let's go ahead and bring it up here on both these devices. And the reason why I'm showing you both these devices, I want to show you one thing. This is on the left I have, this is a Verizon uh, phone. This is provided to me for review from Verizon. And the one on the right is my device and that's the one I re I'm reviewing. So overall, when you're getting the experience on both of them, um, we're getting here and I want to mention this, you're going to notice um, I have sRGB turned on. This is why you're getting slightly off tone between the two of them. So don't be alarmed. The color difference is purely aesthetics. We are running 7.1.1, Pixel XL, Pixel, and then of course, we're both running the latest version of the software here. So let's go back here. Uh, both devices have the Google Assistant, which is very, very nice. I'm not gonna actually launch it, I wanna go. Uh, the reason why I really like the Google Assistant is the functionalities that we get with it. So if I go in here and say, how's the weather in London? Right now in London, it's 55 and cloudy. Is it gonna rain tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in London. Don't. How about the day after tomorrow? Yes, the forecast for Thursday in London is 50. So it's contextual, it's conversational, you're able to talk to it, you're able to ask more questions about the same subject and keep going on. That's something that we normally don't have. Now, we still have access to Google Now, both Google Now support functionalities there, and that's really some of the main benefits that we're getting here. Um, I also like the fact now that we have OB, uh, USB OTG functionality on our units, and this is by the included dongle. When you first get the, uh, the Pixel devices, you get this dongle in the box. And I initially, when I looked at this, I thought this was purely for data transfer. So A, we already have a new step, Nexus or Pixel devices are now enabling us to transfer data from iOS and Android devices, other Android devices, onto our Pixel devices to set them up and start off fresh. And that was the main intention of this cable. But then I realized that I can do one more thing that I have not been able to do out of the box with a stock Android device, specifically from Google. And that was the ability to, let's go ahead and plug this in, getting access to something called USB to OTG. If you guys are not familiar with this, it's called USB on the go. And that's the ability to be able to access this thumb drive 
let's say explore and I can access it as a, as a built-in hard drive so let's go in here I was actually checking this out just a second ago let's go back here and what you're getting here is the experience of what you have if let's say you connected a hard drive to this and I have this is 128 gig hard drive uh, thumb drive on top of the 32 gigs that I have built in here and now I have access to an entire library I have my backups um, I took some pictures here before and this was a long time ago with another phone but either way you can still get what I'm trying to do here is I can open it up I can share it I can export it and do whatever I want from it and it's you know usable it's very very functional I can eject it and then the thumb drive has been ejected and then you can take it out USB OTG, that's definitely a big plus in my, my book as far as getting that stock out of the box. Historically, I've always had to root my device and get, uh, well, if you guys are not familiar with root, I'll give you guys a link to where you'll be able to get access to be able to root this. But at this point, essentially, it's out of the box. It has this built in. We have gesture control on both these devices. Again, 7.1 is installed. Let's go down here. And uh, here it is. It's under moves. So we have the ability of swiping with the notification panel to jump to the camera if you're you know, double pressing the power button. We have to flip the camera to be able to do a double twist and it'll flip to the front facing camera. We have the ability of double tapping the phone to, to turn on the screen for peak. And of course, lifting and holding the phone to be able to get that. The other thing I wanna to mention to you guys is now we have the option of doing this. Now, this may not look like too, too big for you guys, but the ability to restart our Android device, specifically from Google, has been something that we haven't had the ability to do before. Now we have the option of restarting. We even have the ability of going into our recents and say clear all and clear all the recents applications. Now, without really you know knocking it down, if I go here and I'll go home and I'll open up Maps and let's say I'll open up Twitter, and I can actually now go in and let's say we'll go to Play Store, I'll press and hold, and I'm able to launch split screen. This is a very nice implementation, and you're really using it here. So this will have Daydream, it has Daydream installed on it. But you have the ability of switching between applications, going home. You notice it minimizes it. My, my top screen is there. I can press it, bring it back, select the application I want. I can go back, I can go here. I can minimize it, bring it down. Oh, let's go ahead and bring it down. And I'm back right here. If I double tap, it takes me into the last recent application. Double tap again, same here. If I go to the Recents app, well, go ahead, go print it up, press and hold. And let's say I'm in the Recents app, I can double tap. It does the same gesture for me at the bottom and I can say clear all. And then now it says no more other applications for me to do. I can bring it down. Very, very nice. Again, built in exactly how Google wants it on the hardware that Google wants it. The next thing I want to talk to you guys is the inclusion of Daydream. Daydream is a virtual reality implementation or in the best way to explain it, this is Google Cardboard Evolved. It's been upgraded to work with a specific set of hardware. So this is the Daydream uh, VR headset. I did a review for you guys here on the channel. I'll give you guys a link. Um, you're able to insert both devices. They're protected. You can connect them and it has a nice little strap. It's made out of a nice fabric material, very, very soft and very nice to use. But the real main star of the show outside of the optics really is the fact that we have an hour remote that's touch sensitive we have buttons we have volume control and it's also a location sensitive which means if i'm moving my hand to the right and left you can see it in the actual experience and again i'll, show, I'll send you guys a link or i'll give you guys a link in the description below for the review but it actually is a very nice implementation of what you can do in vr it's not gear vr it's not oculus rift it's not going to be at that high level but from an expectation of coming in from cardboard which is what we used to have in the past this is a much better implementation to what we have I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I don't like but before I get to that saying I'm going to start talking about the last thing that I really like about this devices and I'm also going to jump in from there into what I really have an issue with at the beginning at least the beginning of that list uh, the first thing I want to mention to you guys this has really by far one of the best cameras on the market uh, 12.55 micron sensor it really has f point it has an aperture level of f 2.0 so what it does for you it gives you really good low light now it's not as low on the aperture as well as let's say the, you know, the S7 or the S7 Edge. But again, with the uh, bigger pixels that we're getting here, it just gets a lot better, sharper pictures. And we can definitely check it out and look at the pictures here. Let me go ahead and open up the gallery. And this was one of my exercises with my son and I decided to take a couple of pictures over the week. So here, me and my son being funny, being crazy. Uh, and again, very, very nice. We went to the Discovery Museum, very, very good pictures. And I love the fact that I'm able to enjoy these pictures just exactly the way they're intended. It takes 4K uh, pictures, it takes really good. Then we were playing here with the smoke um, and I'll show you guys some of these pictures. But again, very, very nice, very 
amazingly uh, you know built-in camera and again for the fact that it doesn't have OIS the EIS that's built into this is pretty good and it does a pretty good job of that giving us really good stable photo footage now where it starts getting into a little bit of an issue for me and I'll go in here real quick and show you guys what I mean here is an example of what I'm referring to the main thing you'll notice in this picture other than the fact that obviously the subject is center is that there is this halo effect this is a, a weird effect coming in and that's coming in from the lens and I swipe to the right it's the same exact event and I tried even putting in the, the, putting him a little bit to the left where the light is too much on the left side so I expected the glare on the left side you could still see it on here it's sitting right there on the edge and it's just basically one of the main issues with the camera a lot of people have noticed it I would have wished that the price point that we were getting this camera or this device that we would have had these things worked out as the Nexus 6P is not in the same position and other HTC devices that were released this year don't have that same problem um, again, hopefully this could be fixed software wise, but I feel like it's something that it was overseen and not, not as much attention is being given to it. The next thing I want to talk to you guys is specifically to the fact that this is an HTC device made device. This is not an HTC branded, it's an HTC made device. So when Google went to HTC and they said we wanted to make this hardware that works great with our software, for some reason a couple of things fell off the board or fell off the spec sheet. Stereo speakers, not here. HTC has produced the HTC 10 with an amazing set of speakers, as well as also a built-in DAC that has really good audio playback. Actually, by far, one of my top two devices of this year with an amazing DAC. Both, not here. We have a single firing speaker at the bottom on both the Pixel and the Pixel XL. And we're basically left to enjoy music over, I mean, we still have a headphone jack, which is very nice, and I'm really appreciating of that. But at the price point that you're selling this, which is comparable to the price point of what the HTC 10 is, I would have expected a much better audio playback, an audio or playback experience, especially on the Pixel XL, where we're expected to have a premium level. 10, this is a quad HD display, bigger pixels, better display. So you want to enjoy your content. And this is marketed to the public at this point. It's no longer as an enthusiast-based device as the Nexus line was. So I would expect more competitive uh, and more, let's say, if nothing else, even IP, uh, some kind of a water resistance level built into this outside of just basically being slightly splash proof uh, we're looking at devices now that are waterproof samsung's put out two three devices even though the third one didn't make it that are essentially you're able to take them in and wash them and not have an issue with this and you still have to worry about these things so those are things i would worry about hopefully in the future we'll see better and the version two of the pixels next year will have something a little bit more robust and more comparable finally uh, price point. I think unfortunately this year the Pixel line of devices being that they're marketed directly to the public have been overpriced for what they offer. The software experience that what we're getting from uh, from Google historically has never costed us this much of a premium. Now the price point on the devices going from the Nexus line over year over year we are getting a slightly more expensive device. But again, I felt like that the experience was still being implemented there, and then the the spirit of Google's implementation of software and hardware, uh, you know, harmony was always there. But now to start off by six hundred and fifty dollars for the cheaper end one, uh, and then going up from there based on the basically on the size as well as the amount of RAM that you want or built-in storage that you want, uh, is really putting it out of hand or out of reach for some people. And I think it's really trying to be competitive with some of the other devices on the market, although it's kind of falling a little bit short on features when it starts comparing to, let's say, an HTC 10. You put this against the HTC 10, HTC will release an update to the 10 to Nougat pretty soon. You may not get it right away, but the fact of the matter is sooner or later you'll have a better experience on the HTC 10 than what you're getting right now comparably around even the Pixel, if you go with the Pixel lower end via side. So that's something you want to keep in mind. And Samsung, of course, have already hit it out the park. I'm not trying to be a fanboy. I'm just trying to be realistic to what we have at the end of 2016. Although this is great, I just don't feel like it's great enough. The main thing about these devices is that they're extremely snappy. They have a lot of resources and the support behind Google to be able to provide you with updates. Now, regardless if this device is on Verizon, which this one is, and this one is an unlocked version, both are getting updates almost about the same time from Google and through Verizon to our devices with security updates, new features. Um, and since release, we've had quite a bit of updates and new features being added. The recent one was essentially the able to, ability to pick up your device and then just basically be able to get a glance at your notification, double tapping on the screen, to even get the same function and we're up to Android 7.1.1 so we're no longer even 7.0 we're up to 1.1 on this very very nice um, I think if you guys were interested in Android devices you have the option now to go straight to a Google device this is the first Google device outside of just basically saying it's running Android Android is an operating system that usually gets skinned this is actually running a pure experience of Android 
on a hardware that's designed by the company that designed the software or that updates the software. Maybe that's a better way of looking at it. So it's optimized to work on this set of hardware on both either the Pixel and the Pixel XL. Really, the differences, as I mentioned to you guys, is pixel density and screen size. Overall, the same processor, same RAM, same resource availability, same update cycle. All of those things will work for you very, very well. Just keep in mind, if you prefer a bigger screen with Quad HD, go for the Pixel XL and pay the little bit of extra money on that. It's worth it for the picture size. Uh, and if if you want to stay compact and you want to go with something that's more hand and pocketable, go with the 5 inch display. 1080p is not bad on this panel and it works really nice. And the cameras on these devices will make you enjoy using these either in front facing camera experience for video conferencing or even if you're just taking video outside of nature. Hopefully you guys will have an opportunity to check this out. Go to your local Verizon store. You can actually hold these devices and check them out and see the experience as far as what they feel like in the hand. And that's really the main benefit of having Verizon on board is the ability to making this more accessible to the regular user. We no longer just have to look at the pictures online. We can actually touch them, see how we feel about the device and then pick it up if we like it. Other than that, thank you very much for allowing me to check out this Pixel that was provided to me from Verizon for review. This is my own, the Pixel XL. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you guys in the next video.